disappointed in me. I well, I should say out of modesty stake that I understand that your frustration mean and I know that I should say that I'll do better and I'll be a good little housewife and I'll greet you at the door looking like Elizabeth Taylor but and that I'm a wonderful cook. But I don't think that you should be frustrated with me. And if it's because I can't well I don't know if I can't but it's because I haven't I I understand your frustration in that, but in not having a baby, but I don't think that you should be disappointed in me. Wild men take me, but I'd love to have a cool one to go home to when I've had my fun. And that's just a song I liked, but the boys I knew, they did dig me, but they were boys, just boys. <laughs> dig. I like beat Argot. I like beat talk, Christmas, cocktails, Percy Faith. <laughs> and well, I love, well, I loved you. <clears throat> when I met you, I was 
completely struck. I <laughs> only first kiss. It was December fourteenth, nineteen fifty-seven, and after that, I knew that there were boys, there were men, and there was you. And <clears throat> uh, and I really had the audacity to think that because there was someone like you who saw something in me that no one else did, I was the most lucky, most blessed, most whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and you know what? I was happy too. It was Christmas time, after all. And uh, <laughs> I think I told you this that day, but if I, if anyone were to ever fall for me, I knew that it would be in December. And I was wearing the Dewberry light up red lipstick and the green dress. I'm a sucker for themes. <clears throat> and I think I said that when there's snow on the ground and twinkling lights on all the porches, I knew someone would find me what he was looking for. And I wasn't surprised it was you. I mean, I knew it'd be somebody like you, somebody who wasn't wild, somebody who wasn't a kid. You know, I liked the boys in my class, but they were just boys. All they wanted to talk about was cars and the Cubs and Ernie Banks and Mo Dabrowski and Bobby Hall and all that. And I, I took myself pretty seriously. I mean, I still do, but I, you just weren't look you just weren't. He didn't say anything to tip me off. It's just the way that you looked at me at first. And I thought that <laughs> probably wrongly because there was somebody who like you, who saw something special that nobody else did, that I was somebody. I, I had something or was something and I wasn't just some kid who, <laughs> I knew then that I was supposed to feel guilty about it. About what we did, about me sneaking away to be with you at the Rust Cavern Motel three days later, and to have the cocktail set up, and to have a little speech about how I need to be home by eight, and I had another little speech about the twinkling lights and the snow in December, and it's not just how I looked older than I was, I thought I did. It's that no one had ever thought I was young. I was an old soul, whatever that means, and <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you what I wanted for us and for me, and I had an entire rough draft of our lives, and I was going to tell you all this, and <clears throat> then you just kissed me, and the door wasn't even shut, and I didn't make a home that night or the next night, and I've always loved this time of year! Do you know what I read today in this magazine? Just like a cookie, the plum pudding from bank. When I asked for coffee, the good woman said she couldn't serve me. I was astonished. I was so angry. President Kennedy himself has made deep apologies. But these humiliations are bad. Everyone can exploit them. What is the ambassador from Chad? Malik Slau is his name. And he got turned away from a Maryland truck stop diner because he's a black man. <laughs> and the woman, the awful woman from the Bonnie Bray Diner said that he didn't look like an ambassador, just an ordinary run of the mill. And then she used that word, which I'm not even going to say it, but you know what it is. And it, you know, that's not even the worst part. It's just the fact that she felt entitled to call him that. Or, even ordinary or run of the mill. It's just, it's just a horrible thing to say to somebody. And, and just to walk into an ugly little truck stop, especially since he's done important things and is someone important, and just to get called that. It's not right. I, I still have hope. I, I know that's one of your pet peeves in me that I find hope in places where it's not merited, but I think I like that about myself. Or at least I used to, but... Um, in the motel, when I was crying, it wasn't because I was sad. It was because I was hopeful. <laughs> Even though I was scared and embarrassed, I, I still had hope. Because <laughs> I think this applies to the same situation. Because at the end, I knew that there would be light and there would be core there'd be racial desegregation and black diplomats go and eat in little truck stops and 
just Americans in general could. <laughs> it isn't the fight what this country's about. What did you know? Did you know before I told you? Is that why you kissed me? Is that why you wanted to get married so quickly? <laughs> because no matter how many short stories I read, I never pictured someone that I was in love with proposing to me after three days of knowing each other in a motel where my parents had absolutely no idea where I was. But you knew, didn't you? But <laughs> were you <laughs> making the biggest mistake of your life? It's okay. It wouldn't be fair to make you answer. It's like one of those looks of my mother's when she was disappointed. She never did say a word, it was all looks, but you reminded me of her when you grow quiet those first few days. Even when we were at the courthouse on Christmas Eve. Oh, uh, happy anniversary, by the way. I can't wait to see what you got me. I got you a Burma's watch. It's in your stocking. It's guaranteed for three years, actually. Hmm. But when he gave me those looks, I could tell you didn't want to talk about it. I certainly thought you knew that it was a secret we were sharing, even if we didn't share. It made it more of a secret. And I think I actually loved you more for bringing me home to your mother right after, especially when you said, this is my wife. And when you passed me the casserole at the dinner table, <laughs> it was like one big game of house or that Barbara Stanwyck movie, Remember the Night? I, re I loved that movie. And I loved you too, or what I thought was love. It was a few months later that, um, after we started <clears throat> trying that, um, started to wonder if I, if I was wrong. It was May, spring, and there were flowers in your garden, our garden, by then. And they were particularly beautiful when you brought home that newspaper about J. Lee Lewis. I'd always dug rhythm and race records and blues, but I never liked him. There was something so snake-like about him. I couldn't even tell you what, but the article in the paper said that day that he married his cousin back in December. Funnily enough, it was less than two weeks before our wedding, and she was 13. 13 in the paper, and who knows if it was true. I know the reporters always fudge the facts and add a good line there now and then, but the paper said that on her wedding night, she still believed in Santa Claus. She still believed. And you laughed at that line. <laughs> you laughed, and I thought, maybe I should have been ashamed. <laughs> I still believed in you. I did. <laughs> I even believed in you after Halloween when he started working late. <laughs> and what I would do is I would watch television and I'd pretend that I wasn't married and I could go back to school and I'd join the palms team and I would make decorations for the Christmas social and <laughs> I don't know. I'd sing the school fight song in the choir uh, during homecoming, but I'd fall asleep before the night show even started. And when I would wake up, I would see that you had been home. Uh, I could see that you'd showered, um, and I could see that you didn't wake me, which was sweet of you, except that you knew that you could always do that. You knew that I'd always make you a drink and kiss you, and I'd listen about you to you talk about your day, and. <sighs> You know what? I don't actually want to do that anymore. <laughs> but still, I could smell the tobacco. <laughs> I could smell the lucky strength. <laughs> Means fine tobacco. And, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> Before long, I eventually lost my hope. I knew. A very old friend came by today. So he's telling everyone in town. The love he just found, and Marie is the name of his latest flame. I'm not stupid. I know that a man and a secretary have that whole Clark Gable, June Harlow thing, but... I know that I let you down with having a baby, but... You know, I wanted a baby too. I wanted a girl, and I wanted to knit stockings for her, and dress her in bonnets and like sweet little dresses, but... You know, I, just, I went by your work today and I talked to the girl at the receptionist desks and I asked her, uh, what was your secretary like? And apparently she is 37 and very, very stupid. That's older than you are now, isn't it? And 
What is it that you even liked about her? Was it how stupid she was? I... <laughs> Actually, do you know that she's old enough to be my mother? Because when we were married, do you know how old I was? No, I wasn't 13. You are Jerry Lee Lewis and I'm not Myra Lewis, but I was 16. Like that's any better. You know, uh, the old couple down the street, their youngest is 16 and she's an old soul. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't think she's even getting ready to get married, is she? But I just need to know if you ever even loved me because with my perfect memory, I can't remember a single time you said that in three goddamn years. You know, I went to the department store the other day to buy you that watch, and the sales girl there, I, I could tell she's younger than me, uh, she thought I was just some newlywed or something, and uh, she was like looking for relationship advice, and she said, so when did she say, when did he say he loved you? And you know what, I just lied right through my teeth, because I couldn't remember a single time that you had ever said that to me. <laughs> So tell me, Christmas Eve is made for tears, right? Oh, I got you this LB too. It's June Christie. Sorry to spoil your Christmas present, but it'd be a shame not to hear it before midnight. Where the cold hearth fires bright and church bells ringing, hands to hold hearts. holiday style makes it easy for a while to pretend that nothing but a year is ending till the night is near this time of year Of making all the old excuses Friends don't care to hear So I sit and listen To the party going on next door I admit that I thought twice for deciding not to go The laughter sounds so nice I'll just stay here I'm a loss in a crowd There's no loneliness allowed at a ball so like a Christmas Cinderella Trading in her fella And her dream I'll spend a quiet Fireplace evening With lonesome ice cubed cheer And I forget you just as I forget you 
this time of it.